Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anne and this is Wibbly Wobbly Book Nerd and today I am back for you all with a very fun video because when I was in London in February, t my friend Tasmin from Tea Books in Tasman and I recorded a rapid fire book tag whilst getting drunk. So um, yeah, if you enjoy that kind of thing, enjoy this video. I have so many blankies. I'm not 12, I promise. But also, Dalmatians and Beauty and the Bee. <laughs> Cute. I, I have gin though. as well, my love. If we, yeah, we're nearly out. Let's just finish this bottle first. This is fair trade vegan and cruelty free wine. What the fuck? It was seven pounds. Yes, right. Sainsbury's. <laughs> I'm painting my wall this color, by the way. I like it. If anyone disagrees, you can go fuck yourself. Can I swear on your channel? Yeah, I mean, it's not made for kids, so... Okay, let's play anyway, this game! So, you the go. thing I want to do is what I've also done with Olivia, which is the rapid fire book tag. Yeah. Because I like it, and because I have done it wrong on my <laughs> channel previously. Because you're supposed to actually answer as quick as you can, like, first thought. Like a rapid fire. Yes. <laughs> But, except, but but instead of that, I spent 20 minutes pondering these questions and so talking about crazy. why I made decisions. And then I started editing it and it turned out to be a 15 minute video. And I was like, why is everyone's video just five minutes long? <gasps> and then I found out that it did it wrong. Anyway, yeah. point is, ever since then, I just want other people to do it, right? But I will link that video like somewhere above my face our faces and you can click on it and please watch it if you want to see me answer these questions tell like answer these questions with the first thing you think of first question ebook or physical book physical all right paperback or hardback paperback i like to crack the spine online or in-store book shopping in-store trilogies or series <sighs> trilogies because they're shorter. I'm not good with anything that's more than one book. <laughs> okay. Heroes or villains? Heroes! Heroes? Yeah. Oh. Basic bitch over here. I like villains. <laughs> so. I like villains. <laughs> yeah. So, a book you want everyone to read. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I agree with that. That's a beaut- I have two cats, by the way, and they are jumping everywhere. I'm very sorry. I mean, it is 2.30 at night. I so thought it was going to be active. later than that, to be fair. That's quite all right. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, the, the most beautiful female female romance I've ever read in my entire life. It felt so good to read that. I was also, so emotional. Very realistically written. Yes. It was beautiful. Then, recommend an underrated book. Fuck, okay. Um, One that is not hyped enough. Okay. Shit. Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. So Sarah Crossan, I think, is quite a well-known writer. She wrote one, the one that we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Moonrise is about a boy who is all written in verse, so like poems. It follows a boy whose older brother in America has been sentenced to death on death row. And it follows the younger brother when he goes to visit his older brother. This is Tucci. <laughs> Ouch. He goes to visit his older brother before he's sentenced to death, hoping that he won't be hoping that appeal will go through. And that book, I read it in almost one sitting, and it moved me so much, and I haven't heard anybody else talk about it. Okay. It's Moonrise by Sarah Crossan. Go. The last book you finished. Oh, Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Yes. And what did you think of it? Oh my god, it ruined my soul. Not only is it like cute and heartwarming, but it perfectly like encapsulates what it feels like to be falling in love for the first time as a teenager. And a lot of young adult books are obviously adults trying to imagine what teenagers would say in certain situations, whereas this, because Alice Oseman's only like 25 or something, yeah, she remembers it's not that far along far away far uh, mm -hmm, ago not that long ago for her 
to have fallen fallen in love with her. We've had so much wine, guys, for her to have fallen in love for the first time, and it felt so real, especially as a queer person. My first love was a female, and the main characters in this are both male, and it felt so... I felt what Charlie felt, I felt what Nick felt, and it was painful and beautiful all at the same time. Yes. Amazing. It was. In case definitely. you couldn't tell from my t-shirt that I'm queer. In case you couldn't tell. Yeah, it's... it's By any chance. I'm not, it's, it's very subtle. <laughs> yes. Very, <laughs> very subtle. So, last book you bought. Today. Did I buy anything today? Fuck. Yes, you just pulled it out of your bag. Today I bought... What was that? Oh! Tokyo Mew Mew, the f manga, the first two books in an omnibus. I watched Mew Mew Power, the anime, as a kid, and I loved it so much. And we went to Forbidden Planet, and I've been, every time I've been to Forbidden Planet, I've been looking for this manga, and they haven't had it. And today, when Anne was paying, I was like, I'll just check the tea section to see if they have it. And they fucking had it, guys. And I bought it. Was that the last question? Nope. Okay, good. We're not there. Because I want one. Weirdest thing you've used as a bookmark. If I don't have, like, like I have a program for a play or a train ticket or something. If not, I am afraid I doggy ear the page. Yeah, that's what Olivia said as well. But let me ask you this: Have you ever used a cat as a bookmark? No, I haven't. Aww. I'm sorry. That's a missed opportunity. Do you know why? Because <laughs> Titus eats my paper bags. My goblet of fire has bite marks in it. It's really. I ordered the Phoenix. You beast. It's really cute though. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so used books, yes or no? I yes, know that I buy a lot of second hand books. Yeah. Top three favorite genres. Oh, okay, fantasy, sci-fi, mm -hmm. classics. Just cl no, classics isn't a genre, is it? Okay, um, not really, but I will count it because it's of that. It's definitely a specific thing. Okay. If if you don't count classics, then maybe like. I don't know what one word that would describe it, but like naturalism, maybe day-to-day -day life of people living mm -mm -mm. as humans. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Borrow or buy? Buy. I do not borrow books. Like I am currently looking at Jasmine's bookshelves. <gasps> like there are four of them, <laughs> and they are filled. But that's not just it. Like there are books. Scattered throughout her house, everywhere. I have another bookcase right there, babe. Oh, there's <gasps> five bookcases. One small one, though, but it's full ish. So, yes, loads of books. But I mean, she's definitely supporting authors and getting second hand as exactly. well. So, I mean, there's just so much to enjoy here. What's the book equivalent of slow fashion? Because I support that through second hand books. Slow deforestation. <laughs> so bad. I hate myself. Let's all use symbols and signs uh, instead of save yeah. the planet. I don't all like symbols. Right. So, a character driven or a plot driven book? Character driven. Okay. Definitely. Long or short books? Short. That was quick. I'm scared of big books, even though I'm writing a big book. I'm scared of reading big books. <laughs> okay, so another long or short, but then chapters. Oh, okay. Um, short chapters. Short chapters. Yeah. Yeah. For me too, because whenever I read at night, I just try to finish one chapter, and if it's a 50-page chapter, yeah. it will not be like a quick read before going to bed. Exactly. It will be like, oh my god, I want to sleep, but I need to finish this chapter, and it's so long. If it, even if you end up reading the same amount in pages, if you're like, oh, it's just one more chapter, it's five pages, ten pages, oh, I'll read another one, I'll read another one, and it feels like they're bite-sized pieces, as opposed to, exactly. fuck, this is never gonna end. Exactly. One of the best books that I read recently is Things a Bright Girl Can Do, which is a young adult historical fiction about suffragettes pre-World War One and during World War One, and that has incredibly short chapters because it follows lots, of, follows lots of different characters and it jumps between all of them and they're like, some of them are like three pages or like 20-30 pages but they're all very short and that was so handy to read and I was like, oh I'll just finish this chapter. Oh, I'm still awake. I read 
30 more and then I literally read the entire book on one flight in the sky. To LA. Yes. Fine. Thank you. I want to go to LA. Please. And we can bring Ilya. She would love that. I genuinely thought you were going to say something about bringing my cats. And I was like, how can we do that? Yes, please. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, my battery is almost empty. Oh, let's let's pause this. I will be right back. I'm back. Gin is going to cleanse your palate. Great. Tasmin's making me a gin and tonic and ice. And I'm also going to try a Chinese spirit. And she's kind of making, make, kind of make it, maketh, you have maketh me afraid of it. Maketh? <laughs> she maketh me afraid, good Shakespeare. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> but she made me a little bit afraid of it. She's just like, the gin will be your palate cleanser. And I'm like, okay, will I need that? It's very, very strong. Wait, I'll find out the percentage and I'll tell you. Okay, so this is Agua Tol. Guess what percentage this is? 70. Okay, what's well 50? <gasps> I can't open it. <laughs> Come here. Let me try this. <laughs> okay, I need to send my mum this video as well. Let me tell you why I have this. So this is a... I want to hold it. This is fucking expensive. I don't know exactly how much, but it could easily be 200 pounds, this bottle. It's fucking expensive. Now, let me tell you why I have this at the moment. So my mum is Chinese and... There has been evidence, I'm happy with this evidence, that people that drink Argotol and Maotai in China proportionally haven't been getting the coronavirus. <laughs> Somehow, drinking Maotai and Argotol <laughs> is stopping people from getting the coronavirus. Oh my Bearing in mind, God. my mum has always pooped herself in the past whenever I have a gin. And now she brought a 200 pound bottle of Argotol and an ancient bottle of malt high to my house to stop me getting the coronavirus. I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that, to oh be honest. Oh my God, darling, you just have to take off the rest of the plastic. But uh, I used a corkscrew and I poked a hole in it instead. So these are actually egg cups, but I use them as shot glasses. But, okay, genuinely, Chinese shot glasses are the size of thimbles. So we do not want to use very much. I could drop. Let me smell. It smells like petrol and nail varnish. To me, it smells like my uncles. <laughs> Major alcoholics. Okay, I'm going to give you a baby bit. A baby, baby bit. And that is it. Okay, you did also, like... I mean, fuck, stop it. I, I fuck everything, okay? Just fuck everything is my general mood right now. Especially that, yes. I like it. So you will both have, like, a sip and will not get the coronavirus, right? We will We will be cured of ever getting the coronavirus, okay? Cheers. Cheers. How do you... Is there a word for that in Chinese? Gambe. Gambe? Yeah. Gambe. 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 Tastes a bit like paint, <laughs> but also a bit like licorice. Yeah, I get the licorice. Wow, I've never had it in England before. I've only ever had this in China, and even then, it's been my uncle's being like, "Wouldn't it be funny to give the baby girl some alcohol and then she pass out?" Oh. I'm such a lightweight, at any rate. Oh yeah, me too. But I do quite like. Oh, that's burning. Huh. <sighs> You can feel it go right the way down, but like <laughs> through all of your intestines, <laughs> not just like your throat. It has reached my stomach now though, but that's, I like the taste though. I like this way more than vodka. Vodka is fucking disgusting, unless you have like a nice vodka. And like tequila also, if you get a cheap tequila, <laughs> nice tequila, nice. Like, I mean, it burns my throat, but the taste is actually really nice. Should we, do you want to have another shot? I'll say, I'll record it so I can send it to my mum like immediately if you like. Like the same baby bit, like one okay. baby mini sip because it's... Hi mum! <laughs> so t teach me again. Gambe. Gambe. <sighs> oh. 
just burned. Oh wow. So, as we are back right now with more alcohol, Fuck. some gin. I think I might die. You have fluff on your nose, it's cat hair. <laughs> Everything is cat hair. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to That's the next That's a question. thumbnail. Your hair looks incredible right now. Look at you, you're like, I'm a mermaid. I wish I was a mermaid. You are a mermaid. Thank you, darling. So, let's get back on topic. Books. Name the first three books you think of. The Bible. Oh my god, why did that come into my head? Ninth House and Jesus Christ. Superstar, that's a musical. Oh my fucking god, cat in a hat. And you didn't even mention Harry Potter. I mean, there's a cat there. Okay. Ninth House is right there, and I was just talking about the Bible, so that's where my brain went. I'll allow it. Okay. Do you prefer books that make you laugh, or books that make you cry? Cry. Same. I like to feel like I want to die. Yes. Can I tell you so, some books that have made me cry a lot? Yes, name three. Uh, we Were Liars by E. Lockhart. That's that, cool. I know some people guessed the plot twist at the end, but I did not at all, and it made me so, so upset. Spoiler um, alert. Well, there's a plot twist, I think people, yeah, whatever that may be. Um, I knew there was a plot twist, I still didn't see it coming. Okay. Um, also, Moon Rites, but that's because it has a personal relevance to me. Oh, fuck, what have I read recently? Oh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, yeah. but because it's so beautiful, the bit, cut this bit out, or at least fast forward or something. I completely okay. got that. Okay. that was it was beautiful. beautiful. Like, books that made me cry are number one, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, because it is just so beautiful and atmospheric and genuinely very sad. Yes. Oh, I bawled my eyes out. Let me think of another book that made me cry. Very you say me? three. Um, book that made me cry. So let me just quickly check the books I've read. Oh, oh, the boy to mold the fox and the horse made me sob. Tasmin was taking a bath. I was reading this book to catch up because she and Ilya has already written, had already read it. Ooh, ooh, and the other book that recently made me cry was Lovely War by Julie Berry. I don't know that. Huh? It is a historical fiction about... Oh, it's beautiful, Tasman. It's beautiful. This is a story about Aphrodite having an affair with Ares. And... I love them both. Hephaestus, Hephaestus, Hephaestus. Her husband finding out and putting oh. her on trial. And her way to get out of that is to tell Hephaestus or however I should pronounce his name, her best work. And this is a story about two couples during the First World War and their love story. And it is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And like, um, Aphrodite narrates this story and she's constantly like interjecting her opinion and like, I do not regret what I did right here. and. It Hefe is beautiful. I don't know how you pronounce that. Let's look up, hang on. But if you like historical fiction and like books about the First World or the Second World War, read this because it is beautiful to pronounce. Let's look at YouTube. Hephaestus or Hephaestus? Hephaestus? Or Hephaestus. So, tangent aside. How is there more? I love, I love really long videos, so I'm excited for this to be an Girl, hour long. most of my vlogs are 50 minutes. I know, so. and I love watching them. Thank you. Thanks for that. Friendship. So, next one. Books about our world, or books about fictional world? Fictional! Yes. Audiobooks, yes or no? Yes. Do you ever judge a book by its cover? Always. How does it catch my attention? It needs to stand out. Right? I do genuinely not believe people when they say, I never judge a book by its cover. Bullshit. And if they 
genuinely don't, they don't have a personality. No, because what draws you to a book? If there, there are, cover. if there are, if there is someone that goes to me, this book is incredible and you need to read it to make your life better, and it has an ugly cover, then I will read it. But if I'm in a book bookshop and I see a book with an ugly cover or a book with a nice cover, I will naturally, as a human being, be instinctively drawn towards the thing that is pretty. That is human nature. That's why we have redesigns of book covers. It makes sense. It's logical. Yes. Publishing. Exactly. Exactly. So, next question is a movie or a TV show? TV no, show. No, 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 no. Oh. Book, no, 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 no. Sorry. I went ahead a bit too far. Book to movie or book to TV adaptation? Fuck. TV. Let's just say that quick. So, more episodes to cover all the material. Yes, like um, Series of Unfortunate Events, I feel like is a perfect, perfect example. The TV, no, the movie was like one and a half hours, two hours for three books versus the TV show which was two hours per book which I thought was exquisite. Cool. I haven't watched that. Also haven't read the books. I read the first like five books when I was in primary school. Very good books. But the TV show is amazing. I will watch it. It is with Neil Patrick Harris, right? Yes, he's incredible. I prefer him to Jim Carrey. Cool. Controversial. But I must Although, say I just prefer Neil Patrick Harris like I he like him. Amazing. He's amazing. It's great. Amazing. But speaking of amazing adaptations, a movie or TV show you prefer it to its book? Fuck, fuck, fuck. I can't think of any right now. What is an adaptation? The genuine panic in your eyes is... I am so distressed. I'll tell you, the first adaptation that just came to my head is the play version of A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Oh. That was... Well, you have seen that. I saw it. It was beautiful. I'll send some pictures to Anne so I she can put them Wait in a here. second, my camera might be having a bit of trouble. It's alright now. So, um, Monster Calls. I saw a Monster Calls at the Old Vic, which is one is a, an old theatre in London. Um, and it was like overseen by Patrick Ness as well, so he had like he was involved in the production of it. Oh and God. it was by a theatre company called The Company, and it was directed by Sally Cookson, who is one of my favourite directors and one of my favourite the, the company is one of my favourite theatre companies. They are incredible. I've seen multiple things by the director and by the company. And this production was phenomenal. They won an Olivier for the best, I think, family production. So it's like for all ages. I cried more at that than I did at the play. Uh, no, at the book or the, yeah. or the film. I would rank um, the play of A Monster Calls and then the book and then the film. So let's move on a little bit. Series or standalones? Standalones. I'm not good with more books. Mm. I get scared. Too many of them. Oh, that was it. <gasps> I'm sad. Make up more. Tell me some questions now. Make something up. Um. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, I know it was a mess, but it was so hilarious to film this and I had a lot of fun watching this all of this footage back and editing it it was such a great time it really makes me miss my friends but I just want to say thank you so much for watching if you want to follow me on all my socials they're down below and you can subscribe to my channel if you like content like this and I just want to say thank you again and I will see you soon in a new video I love you goodbye